there's a story that's not being told. The story of Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. The world has condemned it as the occupied West Bank. Could it be the biblical and historical heartland of Israel? Hear the miraculous stories of true pioneers who have dedicated their lives to the restoration of this land. Discover what's being hidden by mainstream news and media. Experience extraordinary places that few people even know exist. Join us for the Joshua and Caleb Report, stories from the heartland of Israel. Welcome to the very first episode of season three of the Joshua and Caleb Report, stories from the heartland of Israel. I am Joshua Luke Hilton, co-hosting with Caleb Waller here. Quick little inside look about my name. Yes, my first name is Joshua, and I decided that since this is the Joshua and Caleb Report, maybe I should go by that. Although right now I'm just filling in for Joshua Waller, who is off on his honeymoon, but will be back eventually in the show. The interview today is with Ezri Akin, also known as El Kanam. Did I say it right? El Nakam. El Nakam. This guy is an absolute legend in Israel. He has uh, been, uh, he speaks, he does incredible stuff, but his tr personal story is uh, he was one of the freedom fighters. 15 years old, 1947, was part of the initial forces that claimed this land for the Jewish nation. And this guy throughout, since 1947 until today, has been fighting and he's the oldest man in the reserve, still active reserve of the uh, Israeli military. And I've heard this guy speak on a couple occasions and you, you literally, at the end of it, you always jump on your feet with like two minutes of applause because he truly is a hero and uh, I'm honored that he's taken the time this afternoon to spend time with us because uh, he he's truly is a hero. <laughs> shalom, shalom. Shalom, let's see. Shalom, shalom. I'm Luke. Good to see you. Good to see you. How old do you know, Ezra? Can I ask? 88. 88. Wow. Ezra, thank you so much for uh, taking the opportunity to be with us today. And uh, we just feel so honored and privileged that uh, you would um, take us around Jerusalem. You were part of the underground resistance movement, yes. the Lehi, and you joined in 1944 when you were 16 years old. Right. Um, what motivated you to, to join well, the fight for the land of Israel? I was maybe, I don't, I can't remember if I was at that time eight or nine or 10 years old. My brother, older brother sits beside me and he tells me, you know why the Maccabees fought the Greek? I said, because they were very bad. They imposed all kinds of laws. He said, no, because they, were, they didn't belong. This is our country, the country of the Jews, country of the people of Israel, and no stranger has the right to rule this country or to impose of us foreign rule. And then I thought, I was a small child. Well, I hope when I'll grow up, I will also fight for our country. And if the British rule here, we have to fight them. That is the minute I decided to join what afterward became Lehi. First, I worked in the post office as a messenger boy. Okay. And I used to deliver, especially telegrams, to different places, and among that, then, to the British offices, to their headquarters, to their uh, police headquarters, the military headquarters, and I, I copied those telegrams and brought the underground the copies of all kinds of instructions which came from the central uh, government in London to the representatives here. I wasn't satisfied with that. I said I want to do more, so they maybe join a few more boys and we and we uh, painted on the wall underground's underground's announcement. Once we were trapped in an ambush and miraculously our lives were saved, that uh, they shot at us and uh, my best friend. They caught him carrying a uh, package of 
those underground posters which was, he was about to bring to his, to the, his uh, youth to paste. They caught him and he was tortured to death when he was 16 and a half years old. Wow. Alexander Rubovich. The British brought here 100,000 troops of policemen and soldiers. 100,000? Soldiers, 100,000 soldiers and wow. policemen. Wow. And we were very few, most of us in jails. So right. for those who acted in the field were actually much fewer. Uh -huh. and, uh, and we did the impossible. We, we managed to keep them out. The British decided they can't, understood they can't stay here. They handled the story, the, the, the decision to evacuate to the United Nations. And the United Nations and they gave themselves about, they couldn't uh, evacuate 100,000 troops with all the installations in one day. So they gave themselves about seven months time to arrange their evacuation. The day of the end of British rule was May 15, 48. And then we got the word that the British evacuated what was called, this area was called the Russian compound. Once we heard it, we contacted the other organization. This is the time to achieve our 2,000 years of praying and lasting to get to the old city. Wow. Because from the other side, there was, it was controlled already by Jews and this was by the Arabs. Well, they refused, they uh, said they have different plans. We found ourselves alone. But Yerushalayim, our Jerusalem, is waiting for us for 2,000 years. We decided we'll move towards the old city as much as we can. We'll conquer whatever we can, and then we we'll see what else. And now I'll show you. Around there are some Arabs, uh, exchanged fire, they fled to uh, the other side. We got into this building, we were stunned how it was fortified before by the British. You see, the windows, the doors were covered either with concrete or with sandbags. Wow. From the inside as well, from indoors. We got in and, and we saw, and up there were uh, two uh, hole points for, for guns wow. where they watched. Deep in the night, suddenly the bells of the churches around started ringing. I thought, that's strange. It's not any Christian event that they will ring the bells or something like that. And I thought, I asked my friend who stood sat beside me, we were up there. You know what I think? To whom the bells ring? What's the time? He looked at his watch. 12, midnight. midnight. I said, this is the time of the Jewish nation. The British right? are leaving. Right, this moment start May 15, 48. Wow. The very time of the end of British rule, from now on, is starting the first steps of Jewish freedom after 2,000 years. Wow. I felt so excited. I felt I had to do something to express my excitement, to remember this very great moment in our history. What shall I do? I took a grenade and threw it towards the old city wall. <laughs> the grenade blew and the Arabs from the other side saw that we started a night attack. And they fired enormous quantities of ammunition towards this building. You were inside You can see the building. sign. So you were inside this building and you and threw we, your name? And, and we told each other, each other, let them shoot. We know that all the ammunition gets either stuck in the, in the sandbags or stopped by the, by the stone wall. Right. And it took a long time until they ceased shooting. Wow. And now you can one, see one the, grenade. This, <laughs> that's the result. Now you can see the signs of their bullets. You see all the signs of the bullets here and up. And early in the morning, right after, right after sunrise, we were called 
me and another guy, and they made few fighters joining each of us, and they told us, go ahead, forward. We'll be the first ones who will start uh, acting to conquer the building is close to the wall. One of them was the old post office, post office building. We ran. When they shot at us from different directions, we got to the gate, we found, we found it locked. Wow. Then, under the heavy fire, we had to wait a while until from this side they sent us a small amount of explosive which we activated on the locket. It blew, the gate got open, and we got in. But it wasn't easy, we had quite casualties, and then suddenly someone shouted towards me from here, El Nakam, tell your boys there. We, we got informed, people heard on the radio. Yesterday, Ben Gurion declared the establishment of the Jewish state. The state of Israel was already declared. Once I've heard that, I felt Great, but I'm in the midst of fight. I'm from here, uh, my window, I see the wall. And I know behind the wall, there's a place of the kingdom of David, the, the mountain of God. I said, well, I hope that we'll already be also there if already we have our, our independent state. But we couldn't continue on. Uh, we had already four of us who were killed, three boys and a girl. Most of us badly wounded. There were very few left in, good, in, in quite a shape that we can continue, but we were very tired. And we ran out of ammunition and we couldn't continue on. But we didn't give up. After two months, we got the word that there is an agreement with the Haganah and the Etzel. Tonight, we're going to liberate the old city with a joint attack. Every group will attack from a different way. And zero hour, 11 at night. You have no idea how we were excited. Looking at my friends, I didn't see my, the, the way I, they were yesterday. They looked differently. Everyone was so bright from excitement. I thought it must be the Maccabees looked this way when they're about to deliver it. Jerusalem. In the meantime, we could see what happens in Jerusalem, which is in our hands, controlled by us. It was a dark night, but we could see how the enemy bombards our Jerusalem. I told my friends, listen, let us pull down the helmet because we can get hurt by uh, shrapnels and uh, the bombs are growing uh, ahead in the road here and in, in the street and uh, they and you can get hurt we all pulled down the helmet and right then after i said it i felt a tremendous push in my head and the stream of blood poured from above my right eye there were girls which was uh, nurse to treat the wounded. She stood up and asked, who's wounded here? Because of the dark, she couldn't see my face. I waited to see if others will answer. No one stood up, no one answered. So I stood up and said, I'm wounded. She helped me cross the street from there to, to there is a building not far from me. Just beside this building, there was another building where it was arranged for first help. And I understood my right eye got blinded. I couldn't open even my good eye because of tremendous pain in my head. Anyway, we got there, she made me sit on a chair. I heard, we heard a blow, and right after that, I heard one of the guys <laughs> shouted, the wall was blown. In Hebrew, it's two words. Hearing those words, it wasn't just a wall which separated between the old and the new city of Jerusalem. It's been a wall which was on our way to our Jerusalem for 2,000 years. 
It's the wall which separated between us and the place of kingdom of David. It separated between us and the mountain of God. And now it's blown. What does it mean that we are getting back? I felt I was caressing the skies from excitement. Such a tremendous pain. And in this very moment, while with all this pain, I felt excitement that we're getting back. And then suddenly all my body shook. And I felt I'm facing God and he's waiting for my prayer. I said, what shall I ask for? True, I wanted to leave. I had all kinds of... Yeah. But when I faced my... Uh, I visualized my friends who were killed, those heroes which I so admired. I said, no, I don't have the right to ask for life if they were killed. I said, God, my life is in your hands, you decide. But if you want to hear my prayer, I have one wish in my life, to hear that Jerusalem has been liberated. I survived for, the, for this, what, the for what I do, for the writing and for the Absolutely. telling the next generation. You know, in the Psalms it says, I won't die, but I will survive, survive to tell the, the, the deed of God. <laughs>